joining us in the studio this morning is uh, Professor Akin Omotayo of the Department of um, Agricultural Extension and Rural Development at the Federal University of Agriculture here in Abeokuta. Good morning, Prof. Good morning. Good to see you again. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for Thank inviting me. You. Thank you so much. Um, yeah, we are looking at um, food security in Nigeria, how, how we can achieve food security. Um, this is not one topic that you can just uh, drop aside and say you won't talk about every now and then we talk about food security and so um you need to uh, i mean those that can actually talk about this are experts and prof is just one of them and that's why he's with us this morning prof uh, food security in nigeria um this is one topic that we've um, overflowed um, yet it doesn't look like um, nigeria is uh, on on a sustainable run you know towards achieving food security what have been the challenges? What have been the problems? Well, we have been making efforts, and uh, but our efforts are not enough. For instance, a lot of technologies are now available to make food available to everybody at the right time, at the right quantity, mm. and the right quality, mm. at the time they need it, in the place where they need it. We a lot of technologies have uh, been developed that should make it even faster mm. than we are actually doing it here in Nigeria. So, but I think it's, so, it's okay to talk about it all the time because mm. a lot of people may not be aware mm. that uh, so certain opportunities are available in the public space that people can actually assess. So we, uh, government across the country, uh, state governments have been making efforts, but the effort at state level is not sufficient. At the federal level, I saw yesterday a massive di display on rice production and uh, rice pyramids yeah. in, uh, in Abuja, mm -hmm. uh, uh, mediated by RIFAN, Rice Farmers Association of Nigeria. I think if we are able to put the resources that was uh, uh, devoted to that, if we are able to replicate it in the area of every commodity, let's say yam, rice, I mean yam, uh, cassava, uh, cowpea, and so many other commodities, it will be possible to achieve uh, full security within a very, very short time. But right now, regionally, for instance, in the Southwest, we are still very, very vulnerable to food insecurity. And this is because, I keep saying, we are not making enough, enough effort. We still rely on the old methods, rely on the old calendar of farming. Okay? Even though the calendar has changed completely as it is to climate change, people still uh, rely on rain-fed farming, which is not possible for us to reach our goal at this time. Irrigation, nobody is investing in irrigation. Governments in the Southwest, for instance, we are not investing in irrigation. Okay, at the federal level, federal government invested in irrigation uh, facilities over the years, but most of them are located in the North. So, the Southwest in particular, I have people talking about the uh, Yoruba nation, this and that. If you are not depend, if you, are, if you are dependent in terms of food, you cannot be independent. Uh, isn't that it. isn't that also curious, Prof? Yes. You said federal government has invested so much in irrigation. Yeah, exactly. But all of them in the northern most part of, of them, most in of the them. part of the country. Why why are they not why are they not here? Because traditionally, we uh, had a climate that supported at least eight months of farming in the south. In the north, I think they had just about three or four months of rain-fed farming. And government uh, has done a lot in the north to establish uh, dams, to establish uh, uh, reservoirs that can supply water off-season. In this part of the country, even the few ones we have were actually done by the government in the southwest, okay? It's only in Nikita, I've seen a road dam 
that was developed, I, either in cooperation with the foreign agency, with the multilateral agency, or even the federal government, I'm not sure now. In the whole of Ogun State, we hear about uh, the dam on uh, Ogun River, uh, and there is a federal government sponsored. It is the largest water body outside the coast of Nigeria in any part of this country. But we are not utilizing it the way we should utilize it. And uh, if we deploy some of the resources we have, our God-given resources here in the southwestern part of the country, for instance, we have no reason to depend on any other part of this country for yam, for uh, tomatoes, for onions. I, I keep saying, I don't know why people have not realized that you cannot grow onion in this part of the country. I have a small garden behind my house. I have been trying to grow it, and it's, uh, it's successful. Only in Ogun State or in other parts? In, in Ogun State, in Abeokuta. My house is just about two kilometers from here. Onions? Yes, onions. Okay? So, because a lot of things have changed in the environment. Mm. In the past, we used to think that uh, because of the heat, onions cannot grow here. But I found out that we can actually grow onions here in Ogun State. Go to uh, Porto Novo where we have uh, this uh, Songhai farms. farms. You see that they are growing onions there. In fact, more than 10 years ago, they've been growing onions in Porto Novo. We have the same climate. We have the same soil condition. We have everything that should make onions grow here mm. and produce. Uh, uh, so, Prof, um, yes. it's, it's obvious that um, the challenge we have is not um, about the natural, uh, this thing, the nature has blessed us. Nature in, has in, blessed in, us, in but the a lot of things have changed. But climate has climate changed. Climate has changed, and some of the, some of the effects of climate change is that uh, what we could not grow before can actually be grown now. That's a positive aspect of it. We are growing watermelon in the south now. All the watermelon you see around are no longer from the north. Okay. And we are growing so many fruits and vegetables around here, or we can actually grow them around here. But many people are not aware. Our farmers are used to growing yam, maize, cassava, and they don't, they, they have to diversify. They have to have uh, multi-cropping for us to be able to achieve a goal If, if you have to advise them, the Southwest governors yes. or governments, yes. what advice will you give them now that we have this bundle of opportunities? Now, before we used to have uh, the monthly technology review meetings in the ADPs, agricultural development programs, where we, we technologies from research centers, universities are actually brought to uh, extension agents the train extension agents, this extension agents, in turn, train farmers. It was a perfect system then, and agriculture was moving very rapidly. At that time, the state used to be the highest producer of cassava and so many other crops. And this is because extension agents are empowered regularly. They are fed with information regularly. And as a result, new technologies are brought to the farm. But today, the government hardly funds the ADPs well. Not just in uh, Ogun State, but virtually every part of uh, Nigeria. And that's the, we, 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 our people have the technical know-how to train extension workers regularly. But what is missing is the funding. When you put an extension agent somewhere in uh, Abeokuta, and is not able to cover uh, all the areas within his jurisdiction. What do you want him to do? Okay, we used to give uh, motorcycles to extension agents. Now there are a lot of <laughs> so changes in the social and economic environment. They will convert 
it to uh, to commercial, commercial, uh, commercial, commercial, commercial uh, Okada. Now, but in spite of that, there are things we can do. We can pull vehicles, okay, allocate a vehicle to a zone for extension agents to be able to move and bring all of them together and drop them monthly where they should meet and have the monthly technology review meetings. But it's no, nobody is doing anything about that. Since World Bank withdrew its funding of the ADPs, we've been having problems reaching out to farmers. Besides, in the Southwest in particular, farmers are abandoning the farms. Go, just go to Kobakwe, after Kobakwe, all the people you see selling things on the road are not from the Southwest. They are the Agatus, the Gedes, the people, a lot of people from uh, Benue State have, uh, they have taken over our farms here. Even people are selling their cocoa farms where there is cocoa and uh, they are selling it to people not from this area. And that's a very, very dangerous trend. And uh, uh, I'm talking about Southwest in particular. If, for instance, people from a region decide to take us, uh, to hold us ransom over a particular commodity, we are going to suffer in this part of the country. I recall about five years ago, when there was shortage of onions, because onion was not produced here, so shortage of tomatoes, we can actually produce tomatoes here. Okay? Shortage of tomatoes, shortage of uh, so many other com commodities. They refused to bring it. And what happened? Eh? There was People, scarcity. There was scarcity, the price went up. Went up. Mm. And apart from that, we did a study on uh, uh, household food security in this part of the country. We found out that 65% of income of civil servants go into food, uh, food consumption. What does that mean? What it means is that income that should circulate within here are transferred to other parts of the country. Okay? And it's, a very, it's very, very dangerous. And people don't seem to understand this. Uh, I recall when uh, Dr. Adishina was the minister, he did a lot of inno innovative things that actually transformed agriculture. And it's because of his knowledge that he put into effect as, as a minister. The fertilizer that was a problem, distributing that was reduced with corruption, introduced what we call the e-wallet, okay? He also introduced the uh, telephone, uh, 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 using the telephone SMS to distribute fertilizer. If you have the SMS on your phone, all you have to do was to take it to a center where you can actually assess the subsidy, okay? At that time, fertilizer was openly sold at 5,000. But government was subsidizing it to the tune of almost uh, 50 percent. So if you have that SMS that says you are a farmer, you are, you are accredited, you are an accredited farmer, you can buy yours at about 2,500. Now even fertilizer is beyond the reach of everybody. Mm -hmm. I've tried to farm, but it has been difficult getting resources to. Uh, mm. Prof, what, what, I mean, um, over the years, I've, I've grown up to know um, the relationship between town and the gown. Yes. You know, but but why has it been difficult for you know for town to uh, you know really really collaborate with with gown and uh, you know bring food to the table? Because I know that um, apart from um, a specialized investor like yours yeah, yes. in Ogun State. There's another yes. one in, in I think, Makodi, yes. Makodi State. Yes, yes. Um, and we have a whole lot of um, agriculture-based institutions in Nigeria. Um, so, I mean, what more do we need? You see, all the institutions are doing their best. For instance, government does not fund research. Those who carry out research in the universities today are doing so because they have access to international funding. 
We have uh, recently government is a uh, funding program uh, to the third fund, mm -hmm. which was uh, uh, established. That's the Tertiary Education Trust, Trust Fund. fund yes. Was established as a sort of uh, the struggles of HASU mm -hmm. for so many years. The uh, that was made available to get the university to have funds to fund the universities. But now they have, uh, uh, they have uh, expanded into supporting research by the universities. And it's those who can actually uh, struggle to get their research approved. I think that started a few years back. But it's just a drop of, it's like a drop of water in the ocean. Mm -hmm. What people vote for research in other parts of the world, okay? Some of us have had privilege uh, to work in other countries, and we see that even Ghana here, I have never worked in Ghana anyway, even Ghana here, I'm just using it as an example mm -hmm. of a country that is serious about funding uh, research activities. Uh, even within our own environment. If we go to America, a lot of money is put into research. Apart from uh, the agricultural institutions, government itself has its agencies established mainly to carry out research. In Nigeria, have, here we have uh, about 18 research institutions working solely on issues related to agriculture. But let me tell you, in the last uh, 10, 15 years, many of the institutions have not been funded properly. And so many of them have moved to the, you know, many, many uh, of the staff, particularly the, those who, sh who should be doing research, have moved to universities. Uh, it doesn't have also come from, I mean, first and foremost, uh, for, for any country to, to understand that um, uh, you know, it has to fund agricultural efforts, it has to fund agricultural institutions, policies, agenda, programs. That country must have a program first and foremost. Exactly. Obasanjo, when he was head of state, yes. had Operation Feed the Nation. Yes. Uh, I think there was also Green Revolution. Yeah, exactly. Even his second coming. Second coming. In, in uh, so, 1999 to 2007, so, yeah. he, he put in place a lot of things that supported agricultural funding. Mm, mm. There were special programs for rice, for fisheries, for cocoa, for different kinds of commodities. Mm. But this, as soon as he left the place, all those programs Does that, mean, does that mean you have, um, because some people say because of Asujor is a farmer and that's why he's able to, do yeah, you have to be a farmer? Yeah, no, you, just, you don't have to be a farmer, a farmer to farmer. understand yeah, yeah. that one of the most important security issues in any country is food security. He understands this, and that's why he put in a lot of effort in order to support agriculture. But uh, during his period, a lot of, a lot of uh, uh, innovations were also introduced to ensure that this was sustainable. Okay? Unfortunately, the way we operate, when a new government comes into a system, what they do is to abandon the old just to establish themselves and publicize themselves. I talked about Rifan's uh, uh, display of rice pyramids mm. yesterday. I've talked about it since I got to this program. You see, if a program is to make impact, it is, it should be in the markets. Okay, rice, uh, 50 kg of rice sells for about 30 something thousand. I think it's 35,000 now. Okay, and uh, if we have that quantity of rice actually put into our market, prices will go down, farmers will, uh, will make money, and the incentive to go back and produce the next season. Would be there. You, Prof, 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 so, so the cotton prop, um, yes. uh, specifically about rice. Yes. You don't think the demand for 
local rice, Nigerian rice, is as a result of the quality um, it comes um, with. Really? Because uh, comparing, it's because when you see, I really will go to market and say, oh, I want foreign rice. Mm -hmm. You know, they will never, if they're going to take local rice at all, they, they will want to go for further. You know, uh, so I think there's a huge difference, you know, in terms of quality. The quality let, let, let of that that was in those days. Mm. There is no, no technology used in rice milling anywhere in the world that is not available in Nigeria today. In fact, I eat made in Nigeria rice in my house because we are sure of what we are eating. Mm. Okay, foreign rice is cheaper in the market. That's the point I'm trying to make. Foreign rice is cheaper in the market because we have not produced, we are not able to be competitive sufficiently to, have, uh, to, to produce at the level that other people are producing. Where other people are getting five tons per hectare, even for 15 tons in some countries, we are getting just about 1.8 and 2 tons per hectare. That's what, was, what, what, what brought about the difference? Let, let, let me tell you, there are two categories of rice that uh, is not very common in Nigeria. Lowland rice, rice that is produced in flooded areas, season, seasonally flooded areas. Uh, they produce almost twice higher than the upland rice that is more common in Nigeria. That's one thing. Then there are varieties of rice that you can have two or three harvests from. Once you cut it, it comes up okay. again. And uh, you can, we don't have that. That's not very common. Only in research centers can you see this uh, variety of rice. Until we uh, are able to bring in technologies that enables the farmer to produce maximally. So if we are talking about 15 tons per hectare, we are saying that uh, the total quantity of rice produced on a plot in a season, okay? For instance, can you compare someone who harvests three times to, to somebody who is able to harvest just once? Yes. This is why people are, people are able to produce competitively to such a level that rice becomes cheaper produce elsewhere than in Nigeria. But there was a time the federal government placed a ban on foreign rice. How has it the helped? Ban is still, the ban is still on. How has it helped the production and the distribution? Uh, people are still smuggling. <laughs> and people are angry that it was banned. <laughs> I, I know I have seen some, uh, some angry people on, on, uh, on television protesting that rice was banned. Mm. OK? So uh, because people don't really understand mm that we need to produce locally for our economy to grow. The people who are smuggling need to understand that they are not helping our own economy by bringing foreign rice into Nigeria. Okay? So, there is, uh, when you talk about quality, we have machines for distoning, for milling, that makes our rice look exactly like the rice produced in other parts of the world. Mm. Okay? So, we, the technologies are there, and uh, mm -hmm. unfortunately, very few people are able to actually access them. The, the technology. I, I, I saw a rice milling uh, structure here in Ogo State over, over 10 years ago, along the way to Ewekoro. And I was one of the first people to visit that place, because a foreigner came, wanted to study rice production in Nigeria. And I had to take him, take him around Ogu State. That rice milling facility can actually produce uh, up to, let's say, about uh, 40, 50 tons per day at that time. All they have to do is to feed it, feed the paddy in one section, get out the milled product, the milled product in the other section. But that rice facility is not working now. Government owned? I don't know. I think well, maybe it was owned in collaboration with the government and, an, and a foreign company, an Indian company. Okay. What about collaboration? I mean, uh, yeah, we're spending so much time on rice. Uh, yes. it's, it's one of the staples. 
collaboration, Lagos State and the Kirby State did a collaboration that's called um, Lake Rice sometime in the past. I thought Southwest State, coming back to Southwest now, should also be able to collaborate. Or you're with Ogun, Ogun with Tikiti, or Shun, yes. uh, Lagos with Ogun, you know? Yes. Uh, why, why has that been difficult? You see, farmers are not competing well because there is foreign rice coming in. Okay? I have done a survey of rice production areas in the southwest before, which is in the public domain, published um, in local and international journals. And uh, I found out that uh, even in Osho State, somewhere around Indonesia, the kind of rice I was describing mm -hmm. the other time, we found it in a locality around the uh, after, Il after Ilesha, there's a, there's a village between Ilesha and Akure. And I found this category of rice there. And I said, it should be encouraged. These farmers should be encouraged. I have never gone back to see whether that uh, variety of rice is still there. And uh, there, at that time, I, we did the study. There was uh, a father here. There was a foreign company promoting a father repackaging it, making it look very good, and then sending it abroad. I don't think it was sustainably pursued at that time. And uh, that has been the problem with, uh, uh, with working with foreigners. But we, we talked about collaboration. States can collaborate. What happened to the Ogun State uh, Metro Rice? What happened to it? And I understand, maybe I should not say this on television. <laughs> At that time, most of the rice package were not actually produced here. OK? And uh, this deception, we should uh, get rid of it. If we want to develop the economy, face it scarily and honestly. Mm. OK? The display by refund. Yesterday, I had actually called somebody who is in the university system, and he said, this is real low. OK. There is no gimmick about this. <laughs> OK? I was very really happy. He said, it is real. The period means real. I said, why is it on display? He said, it was uh, a mandate by the funding organization with the CBN under the Anchor Borrowers Program that farmers should actually show that they utilize the funding they got under the Ancoporas program. And that's one way of showing it. We can call that uh, a regular agri show. But that one was impressive. OK? The, the person who told me is a professor. He was one of the facilitators of that program. It is real. There is no gimmick about it. So if our government, state governments, local governments really want to do something similar, mm. they should be, they should be very honest. Yeah. Mm. Honesty, yeah. honesty. I think uh, that's that's the key word. Yes. Um, Prof, as we go on this interview, uh, because um, food security is not one topic that you could discuss exhaustively uh, in two hours, two no. three hours. No. What do you think are the steps that? Um, what will you advise? We are, we are getting close to another election here. Yes. Ten twenty three. Another set of government governors, you know, um, coming in. What, what, what is the recipe from people, you? People should take note of whatever any politician who aspires to lead us, whatever he's saying he wants to do, we should take very good note before we vote for them. Okay? We have seen cases where people want to come in, they promise heaven and earth that uh, they will do this, they will do that. Agriculture should be cardinal, should be a central point for any politician that wants to come in, either at the local government, the state level, or the federal level. Uh, the Anchor Borrowers Program, I call some farmers, are you benefiting the state? Because I have a group of farmers I work with. They, they even have uh, a network on WhatsApp, uh, Farmers Forum, that's the, the, the network. They interact, talk about EUs on a daily basis, talk about pricing of their products, 
talk about commodities that are available, harvested, they tell you where it is, where you can buy it. I think that's a very good development. People are using technology in different ways to facilitate agriculture. Now, those who want to come in as leaders in the next dispensation should actually be questioned, okay? Question them, challenge them, okay? <laughs> Bring them here, let them come and talk about what they promise and what they mm. are doing. Mm. That's, what, that's the way it happens in other parts of the world. If you promise also, and you are there, you are battered everything you promise, then you should be challenged. Mm. And that is why we, we need to query whoever wants to come and lead us. Agriculture is very important. What do you want to do about irrigation? That you make farmers to farm throughout the year. I think the rain-fed uh, farming now is just for maybe five months, May to October, mm -hmm. in this part of the country. What do farmers do in the remaining in the seven months of the year? Mm. They sit idly, mm. not doing anything. Okay? All these things should be worked out by politicians in collaboration with farmers. Mm. So, and uh, if we do this, we are going to uh, move forward. It's always a pleasure yeah. talking to you and uh, having you, you on our programs, uh, Professor Akinamotayo uh, of the Department of Agricultural Extension and Rural Development. Um, yes, you've actually hit the right chord. Uh, and uh, we've also spoken about the sincerity of purpose. Uh, that's also very important in governance. Thank you so much. Okay. Uh, we've been talking about uh, food security in Nigeria with um, Professor Akinamotayo. We'll take this break. When we come back, it will be another topic on the program this morning, New Dawn on the People's Daily. Thank you very much for writing. <laughs>